DNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discussion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Star Trek, The Final Frontier. These are the voyages of the GNT show. Our continuing mission, to explore Star Trek storytelling, to seek out new worlds and interesting characters, to boldly go where no show has gone before. Naomi, Naomi Wildman. Wildman. I was setting it up. Oh. Welcome to the GNT show where obviously we have no script. Yeah, let's just get this puppy started. As always, the beautiful, the lovely, the high-booted, short-skirted, and big-breasted Terry Lynn. <laughs> that would be me. Admiral Shaw. She's badass. It's Ceridium <laughs> Cup Day. <laughs> Good morning. It's Sunday on the GNT show. You know the worst part of this morning? It's not the getting up early. It's the fact they're making me wear clothes to do the show. It's time for coffee class. <laughs> Strap on your helmets, boys and girls. It's going to get rough. Oh, it's going to be one of those mornings. Let me put on my seatbelt, my helmet, with a little blinky light on top. For safety. Well, we decided. <laughs> we were going to do the GNT show. Man. One of the things we said was no standards. GNT show does not go on the air because we're ready. It goes on the air because it's nine o'clock on Sunday morning. Mike could have snapped by then and killed us both. Pain sticks for Mike, evidently. <laughs> we have our production meetings on the air. Well, it's the best way to get you to adhere to things. Yeah, you've now set an expectation. Oh, I That's the thing about the GNT show is we set no expectations. I need more coffee. Wow. This... I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to do general news or Star Trek news. And I this is Terry having a series of small it's strokes, news. actually. Well, it doesn't take long for this show to, to deteriorate, <laughs> does it? straight the fuck downhill. <laughs> I don't always podcast, but when I do, I G&T. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the G&T Show, episode 198. I'm Terry Lynn. Eh, fuck y'all. <laughs> it's our cranky rum morning, Gettysburg. Yeah, it is. <laughs> what are you wearing today? Nothing. Yay! <laughs> Apparently, we're all on the bus this morning. <laughs> I am sans uniform. Oh, I love that word, sans. <laughs> and then introducing, of course, Ceridium. Kapla. I'm sans serif. Oh. <laughs> I don't have no fancy doodads attached to my body at this point. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh. <laughs> so oh. how's everyone doing? Okay. How about yourself? I'm doing well. It's been a week. Wow. Yeah. Has it been a week? Yeah, it's been a crazy kind of a wacky week. Somebody uh, in the uh, chat room said something about my Facebook page looks like it's been attacked. Like the like the Confederacy has attacked a Skittles factory. Yeah, I saw that. Which I thought was pretty funny. Yeah, this country cracks me up. It really does. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. I am, I am, I, although I have to say, I'm very, very happy about the uh, the recent U.S. Supreme Court decisions. Some good congratulations, ones have been made, yes. congratulations to all of our loved ones who um, have now, although we've always felt that way, legally now get married. We've always felt that you could, but um, yay. You know what? This is like, you know, a great time to be like a wedding planner. (laughs) You know, know, seriously, did you read the Forbes? And a divorce attorney. Seriously. (laughs) I kid you not. Um, Forbes did a study of what this meant for the U.S. economy. And it was something like an increase of $400 billion. It was just like some insane amount of money because of all of the work that it will generate for everybody, not just from the wedding planners and the divorce attorneys, but, you know, um, seriously, the premium, the increased premium for insurance, the ability for people to, you know, it, it's all of it. Taxes. Taxes. It, it, people think that it, there's um, this, this real great thing you get for being married and a tax break you get for being married. Well, that I can tell you right now that kind of doesn't exist, especially for Alan and I. I don't know. Didn't, we never got a tax break. Um, and while there is a little bit when it comes to filing jointly, if you're filing separately, it doesn't make any damn bit of difference. Um, but overall, childless couples end up paying a little bit more, kind of. So we uh, that there's going to be that influx of you know the ability to buy and share property, the ability to it's just going to really kind of it's going to be good. Cool. It's, it's good. good, yeah. And I know there's been some other crazy, stupid stuff that's been you know going on this week with uh, how shall we say Nick hypersensitivity, um, style over substance. There's there's a there is some uh, of that optics yeah. over mm-hmm. reality. Yeah, you yeah. got you became the target of of one such. Uh, I most certainly did. That was just the treat. I both Alan and I just kind of looked at each other, rolled our eyes, and thought, uh, oh. 
<laughs> to pull an Eddie Izzard, you know. It's just there's tell people what happened. I mean, well, there's two if things you want. That if you don't have to, if you don't oh want no, to, but... somebody contacted me on Twitter. Uh, now, and it was not a Twitter. It was a, it was another person. It was not Twitter itself. Right. Um, but that's because of the restraining order against Twitter. But uh, <laughs> and said that I should take down my my avatar because it's it's offensive because it's a Confederate general. Yeah, I don't get that either. Which means they have absolutely no idea who General Longstreet was or his views on anything. Um, you know, and, yeah. there, and plus there's just a whole lot of stuff going on in this that um, as a historian, I, I'm just it, it, the the lack of uh, historical knowledge in our country is coming to bite us in the ass in, in a huge way. <laughs> right. Well, it's 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 the lack of education. And mm-hmm. we've been complaining about that for a long time. Whether you know, no college. There's no college that has outside of if you're a history major, of course, history courses is part of the core curriculum that you have to have to graduate. Yeah, I know. It's the same but for some of the other shit that you have to have i'm i'm not disagreeing with you i am not disagreeing with you um but the fact of the matter is there's still kids graduating high school who don't know how our damn government works right oh yeah because of no, half of them are running for president right now and they have some kind of an idea that you can impeach <laughs> a judge and i'm thinking you really just don't get how this works do you do you understand why there are three why there are three uh portions to our government and and why all each one of them is so important uh, it's I, so they can hold the other ones in check it, i think it was john ordover who posted maybe it, no i'm trying to remember who it was um but it was somebody i was, was it john ordover but who said um people hey i just want to point out everybody congratulating obama um this yeah. was a judicial yeah it was not executive no he, he obama hasn't actually put any judges in in, in 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 on the court yet has he no but he was taking victory laps like he had something to do with this <laughs> well he was taking victory laps because he was happy about the decision be that as it may, I can understand why people misconstrued that as him taking credit because he really wasn't, except for the fact that it did come. It just under happened his, on his watch. It happened on his watch. And seeing as though the American people tend to. Well, and Mike and I had an interesting conversation mm-hmm. about. That doesn't happen often. No, I know. <laughs> about, about, but about the optics of things, because when the yeah. decision came down, um, you know, I, the office I was in had the TV on, but there was no sound. You know, because, you know, monitoring the news. I I know, shocker, part of my job. (laughs) I thought it was like a 7 to 2 or a 9 to to 0. Oh, no, it's 5 4. Everybody knew it would be 5 4. No, I did not. And it it looked like. But if you look, and Mike and I were talking about it, look at how it's reported. And then look at something if if it goes to something that the right is is trying to, uh, is suing over or however you want to say it with the Supreme Court, um, it would say, the headlines say, always say, divided court, narrowly passes, all of this. I honestly thought it was it was like a huge... A slam dunk or something. A slam dunk. And Mike even said, he was like, wait a minute, it wasn't unanimous. Oh, yeah, no. It just, the, the headlines but, 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 just made and it that's seem the much kind bigger. Of thing, but yeah, I'll tell that's, you... That's that, the kind of thing that people say, the difference between uh, active activism journalism and straight oh, journalism yeah I, I i don't disagree with you there you know that and, i totally and, agree and before any of you sons of bitches motherfucker cunt lickers <laughs> want to write me oh my i don't even think if you think that i was against this ruling just go fuck your mother okay because i'm gonna he wasn't he really isn't against the ruling we're just in pragmatic way, when it comes to journalism gonna, and stuff. yeah when it comes yeah. to oh believe me we got some stuff about journalism later <laughs> yeah we because did. i've got a rant <laughs> Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. That's good. Um, the uh, One of the other things that uh, along those lines that kind of surprised me was the fact that the, the previous decision that had come out with regards to the uh, providing of subsidies by the federal government to the Affordable Care Act, that decision came down six to three, which was much higher than I thought that it was going to be. Right. And, and I really the don't... optics on that wasn't as... As nowhere near. You're yeah. correct. And one of... I only heard one uh, legal analyst discussing this. Um, and I think it was on Al Jazeera, as a matter of fact. That John Roberts contradicted from the, the in the in the, the marriage ruling. It was a 180 from what he said in the ACA ruling. Yeah. 
it, it, so it was like really bizarre. Well, it goes to show that there are uh, against, I don't know. I, I I have a personal problem with people who bring their, their personal beliefs into their, their wearing the robe. The robe, when the moment that you put on that robe means that you take your personal feelings out of it. That's all there is to it. And that you have to be um, far more logical, far more pragmatic, far more um, that uh, reasonable, and I mean reasoned, as opposed right. to passioned, um, if you're going to be a judge. I don't care if you're a, a municipal circuit judge or a Supreme Court judge. Right. That there is that... I, I I owe a duty to the to the Constitution. You don't owe a duty to people, and you and I hate to say it, guys. You don't owe a duty to your God. You owe a duty to the piece of paper. That's your job. You have to take your your personal feelings and your God out of well, it. And on well, the other nobody side of it, does that anymore. Well, and on the other side of it, you don't owe a duty to your uh, your activism beliefs. Correct. Either. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. And and that's what I'm saying. Nobody does that anymore. And it's kind of a, a – it's not kind of. It's it's a pisser. Yeah. But the balance comes with the fact that these are appointed judges. And the balance comes with the fact that historically we've never really had a problem of um, uh, having those judges being appointed by the, the president and then approved by the Congress. It, it Believe it or not, folks, it really does work out. Over the course of our history, yes, we go back and forth. We go back and forth. We go back and forth. But we end up slowly moving forward. That's how it works. Um, so, so get your get over yourselves. You're going to be upset. Some some people are going to be upset when it comes to these two decisions. I say fuck you up the ass if you don't well, like them. I, but, I I saw an interesting thing that says you know the marriage ruling has a very interesting possible side effect. Yeah, with the, with the with, the, gun, with handguns. With gun, yeah, to a degree there is i have and here's the okay here's terry i believe that i understand the ramifications or i don't want to say the ramifications the thrust of these people's dis, um, arguments with regards to the uh, uh, applicability to the second amendment however there is a, a a piece of that that i would like to research more before i comment on it because i'm not sure that it really will apply because of this tick kind of i don't want to call it a hanging chad but it's kind of like this dangling little <laughs> piece a dangling uh, participle if you a, will. a cling on yeah yeah it's a, a cling, cling on. on very well good done, it's a, there's a little issue of a cling on that um that that i think may affect their gung hoism on on that issue uh where where that might bite them in the butt but it's true it's very well, yeah true and i've only some... seen like i've only skimmed what some people have said but i yeah it's the same thing because but it, it brings up an interesting point you know. the, the fact of the matter is really what the, the, the law was about or was what we call equal protection under the law. And that is if you are a human being, you are afforded equal protection under our Constitution. That's all there is to it. If you're human, mm -hmm. you get this right. You get these rights that are kind of laid out, not just in our Declaration of Independence, but in the, the actual Constitution. And that's really what this the, the thrust of the case was. And there were three cases, really, that were brought forward and all heard at the same time. And um, a, California was one of them and a couple of others about whether or not um, these these homosexual people had the ability to access the contractual relationship that's offered to all the other people on the uh, in the country. And that's really all it was. It's, it was a pure uh, equal protection case. My concern is, yes, there is that idea that somehow states can't tell humanity what they, humans, what they can do in their state if it if it doesn't provide them equal protection that's afforded to them under the Constitution. The argument can be made with the gun ruling. Absolutely, the argument can be made. But that uh, opposing argument could be made. That's what I'm concerned about is that if you're a gun rights activist and you're telling them, well, now we can all have guns under a federal thing. I'm thinking, see, but you have to understand is that that argument is two sided. That is a double edged sword where people who are anti gun are going to say that they are provided a higher level of equal uh, of, of protection under the law because your your pursuit that, that your right to a safe life but precedes the, the, some. The, but well, that's, that's the problem see, with that's that. That's why is, I need to. That's why I need to research. And, it. and the other problem with that is, is that the the, their, the Second Amendment ex, is is the only one that explicitly says something about ownership of something. Right, but under 
and the way that it's listed and there's a comma in there and our let me tell you our founding fathers were pretty damn smart when it came to grammar is is only under the auspices of a well-regulated militia well and according to according to the obamacare decision words really don't matter because the way that he wrote that was well this is well, what that's was the intended. other thing too who think here's the other thing we were just talking about and, giving and, people credit and, uh, he didn't write me, that let me just say something uh real real quick to people and terry i'm pretty sure you'll agree with me on this one if you're going to make any argument to me about the second amendment do not talk to me about hunting rifles that is not what it was written for in I'd, any way shape or form. absolutely no i yeah no i agree with you i am so sick of people saying well you don't need it, baby, baby. that is not it was written for a very specific reason right and yeah, one when, that there are a lot of oh go ahead Mike. It, well i was just going to say it, it's when 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 the people believe that their government has failed them it's a lot, it, it's it's their only recourse that they have left is mm-hmm. to retake their government in the in the the case that they feel that their government has jumped the shark. You could almost argue that the Civil War was the ultimate expression of owning uh, of the Second Amendment. You make that argument, sure. I think you know where I'm coming <laughs> from with that. I do. I do. I, I, I really do. Um, you know. I, I mean, I've never heard it put like that. Well, that would be an interesting paper to, to draw. Yeah, it would be. Interesting. I'm yeah. reading a really fascinating book right now about the War of 1812, maybe the least known of any of our wars. Yeah, I bet it is. Well, there are so many battles that we that our country went through 235 years ago plus, or 250 years ago. I mean, we that fought we're all Canada. Involved in. Oh, we yeah, fought we fought Canada. Canada. We fought the French. We fought the Indians. And then 20 years later, we would turn around, make friends with them, and fight the people we used to be friends with. That's what we were – that's well, Come on, it, you know it's true. No, well, the, the War of 1812 was – that was the second war of independence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it was a it was an interesting week. Let me let me tell you. There's um, yeah, we're having fun, and it's nice well, to have. St- what? Yeah, we are, and, but there's oh. some things going. Oh, on. I was gonna, I was actually gonna say we're having fun because Starfleet Mom's at my house. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, that's what. Wait, I mean. how tall is Trucklet now? Oh, uh, probably five. God damn. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful young lady. Oh, I know. I every time so I see smart. a picture, I'm like, she looks. I'm like, good lord, is that the little girl that was at the convention of? years ago like you know taking my stuff and running and with me going where's my stuff you know you know what casey casey's in love i just have to tell you he's in love he is totally in love um and been replaced mike oh no (laughs) that's okay i don't mind sharing yeah that's it he's just been funny Um, oh. in a in a in a truck uh, mode. Yes. If if you're going to post with joy about the, any of these decisions and feel the need to mm. call anybody a name or or say how much you hate another person or group or anything like that, then don't claim Itic. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you know, I agree Because you. you totally do not believe. If you can't accept the the, 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 the differing, differing viewpoint of someone... It's not uh, saying that you who, have to like it. It's saying pity them, don't call them names. Well, and what is more Itic than, um, say, uh, somebody... I'm trying to think of... Uh, oh, what's the name... Um, we lost him. <laughs> now, yeah, I, I had the, I, I had like two polar opposites. I was thinking, oh, nothing is more idiotic than the fact that when Jerry Falwell died, one of the people that was actually heartbroken the most was, um, uh, oh God, the, the penthouse guy, Terry. The, oh, the, oh, I mean uh, the Larry, hustler guy, Larry, Larry Flint, yeah. Larry Flint. Because while they disagreed vehemently, they would debate, but also yeah. had come to a personal, uh, almost, almost a mutual friendship. respect. Well, and that's what's missing from our society today. There used to be a decorum, right? That is true, Itic. Right. There used to be, well, not always. I I will give you credit. Everybody, trust me, I know things weren't easy. But when it came to matters of politics and matters of of political and religious discussion, there's always, yeah, there's always, there was always kind of that you rise above the argument and you debate. We've, We've had this conversation on our show multiple times 
where Nick and I, uh, yeah, we argue. But we love each other dearly. And we and, and there yep. are times we really love a debate. <laughs> but we love debate. We like the people. We like people who understand how to formulate their arm, their argument, give them foundations for the reason why they believe that way, and then present it and let other people make a rational decision or uh, an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> ah, shit. And um, and and move forward, kind of from there. Um, <clears throat> and and yes, the internet has changed that because we no longer have debates. We no longer have discussions. We have mudslinging contests. And it Matt, and it's wasted energy. It's I've truly wasted years, energy. I've said for years, our country has has lost the ability for differing viewpoints to work together ever since Johnny Carson retired. <laughs> and I mean that. I'm dead serious. There was like a, a weird um, happening after he retired. It was like I don't know. That's it was like da- it was like Dad left because yeah. he was from his humor. You could never tell where he stood on an issue. And everything became much more uh, pointed after that. There was no national figure after him that that was just like, let's all, we're all here together. Let's just chill out. Yeah. Oh, shall we get to some Star Trek news? Well, I have to tell you what happened at a bookstore yesterday. Oh, okay. So, Miss Janice is visiting. Hi, Miss Janice. Miss Janice. Hi. 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 And um, we were running around the city of Frederick for going to bookstores because it's a, a summer reading list okay. for school. Right. So we're we're standing and there's these two black women looking at the 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 because you, know, you know Barnes and Noble now now is like fucking a Toys R Us as well. Right. And they're arguing about Batman <laughs> because the older woman is saying he ain't got no superpowers. All he's got is, is a bankroll and a great R and D department. And the younger woman's like, no, you don't understand. So they're going back and forth. So as they're walking away, I finally I said, oh my god, I can't leave please so they turned around and they came over and they started talking to us well the older woman die hard star trek fan oh awesome die hard and like had the vapors when she found out that like when we were talking about and we were like oh yeah Dayton ward we, he's a friend of ours and she was like what are you doing just walking around the store like <laughs> like knowing date and put you on some kind of level you know Dayton, Dayton, Dayton's like hell yeah it does i can yeah, see I it know, right? <laughs> and i said and I know Kevin Dillmore and she fainted. So, you know, <laughs> take that date. But um, it, 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 how long did we talk? An hour? About an hour talking with this woman. Uh, we friended each other on Facebook right there in the in the, the store. Sweet. And it was just one of those really awesome – and this woman – loves her track. She was telling us how she made a Guinan outfit and had to explain <gasps> to everybody in work who Guinan was. Um, all of this. So it, it was, oh dear God, look who's here. I know. I Moogie. To- Moogie's here. Moogie. Moogie. <laughs> Good morning, Starfleet Mom. But yeah, it was so funny. So I gave her, I, I pulled a copy of uh, From History Shadow off the shelf and showed her my name in it. She's like, let me give you a hug. Oh my God, how fun. <laughs> and then she bought a copy of it. So Dayton, you're welcome. <laughs> Got you a sale right there on the spot. Right there. That's well, right. Right since, there. Well, since we're talking about Dayton. Yes. Book news. I have, uh, he made an announcement uh, a okay. few days ago. Um, what was that? He, uh, <laughs> the announcement <laughs> that he made was uh, the paperback editions of Armageddon's Arrow. Oh, I know. Bizarre. So, uh, awesome? Sometime, you know, it was released last month, and some sometime since then, it, they not only hit a second printing, but a third. So yeah, congratulations I, to Dayton Ward. I, it's weird that that <laughs> was the first he heard about it. How big was the? Did you see that? He goes, "Wow, how?" Uh, Brian Thomas Schmidt asked him, "Wow, how big was the first printing?" And Dayton said, six copies, apparently." <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, and that's weird to me that he didn't even know that it was in its third printing. Yeah, it was in its well, third. Well, it must be like a, a monthly report or something, you know, that he, that he but the, receives. But the book just came out last month, so yeah. that tells you. And he's like, "Holy shit, people! Thanks for doing all that book buying and stuff." So congratulations, Dayton. 
I don't believe oh. it until he's on Fallon. I think he's lying. <laughs> yeah, well, nonetheless, I congratulate Just imagine him. Dayton on Fallon. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, actually. I know. That's what I'm saying. Speaking you... of which, we hope you get better, Jimmy. Why? What happened? Oh, you didn't see? No. What happened? He was in the hospital on Friday. They had to cancel the taping of the show. Why? Um, oh. He fell and uh, uh, almost uh, he fell and his ring caught on the edge of a desk and it almost ripped his finger off. Oh, my God. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So he's had, he had to have surgery on Friday and it just so happens he was planned for a two-week hiatus this, this coming two weeks anyway so it just it fell into that but he's he's okay and i was like oh my god he put a he put a picture of his hand all wrapped up after surgery and he goes i'm one-handed tweety <laughs> <laughs> terry i have to point something out that miss janice said yesterday oh there's a couple of things but this one <laughs> so we're in the car and we're driving and a song comes on and it's a stick song okay what's wrong with sticks nothing okay she looks at me and with total sincerity says is this air supply? Terry is stunned into silence. <laughs> Terry is stunned into silence. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is the first time Terry has had zero <laughs> words. I'm just laughing. It was only because yesterday somebody, it was yesterday or the day before, it's, we were discussing, who was it that was talking about being taken to the air supply concert when they were young? And it, That was me. It was you. Yeah, and Moogie <laughs> was talking about. That now she it. understands why I'm the way I am. <laughs> oh that was God. during our, our recent interview with Five Year Mission. Mm-hmm. Um, that we, was this it. week we get, we got to sit down with Five Year Mission and uh, we we world premiere talked about Spock Spring. Yes, we and did. then we got to world premiere two of their songs. Yep, awesome. and then we watched Purple Rain last night, uh-huh. and then we went to get some ice cream. And during the course of the conversation, the following is said: I never really cared for Patrick Swayze. <laughs> I'm not going to give her grief for that one. I love Patrick Swayze, but I knew a lot of people that didn't. He he, he wasn't everybody's person, right? Dirty Dancing, Patrick Swayze. Dirty Dancing, Patrick She's Swayze. She's rolling is, her eyes. And I'll tell you, has she seen Tu Wong Fu yet? No. I, I don't oh. even have to ask her. I know she has. Okay. she. You have to sit her down and make her watch that one. Big Trouble in Little China? He wasn't in that. What? That was no, Kurt wait. Russell. That was Kurt nut. Russell. Go back <laughs> in the corner. Mike, oh okay, my God. Okay. Kurt, really? You're confusing? <laughs> I, yeah, I Mike. was confusing him because I was thinking, Mike. wait, he did a lot of movies with Goldie Hawn, but or, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm thinking Kurt Russell. <laughs> uh, I'll go sit in my corner now. Well, one of the things I put in the chat room is, is some Star Trek news. So we're going to actually talk about Star Trek news. Jack News. On the heels of hearing about Jimmy Fallon getting injured on Friday from taking that fall and hurting his finger, Nana Visitor kind of surprised yeah. everybody on Twitter and posted a picture of herself with a neck brace on, looking very cute still. I mean, she's still adorable. Um, and just said, this is why I haven't been around. Uh, I had a five-hour surgery to remove bone growing into the spinal cord on Tuesday. He says she's all good. So we're very happy to hear that you're doing okay, Miss Visitor. We miss we miss you from Twitter. Um, and uh, But oh my God, how scary. Especially for somebody who like her who's a dancer, right? Yeah. I know. Uh, oh, so um, I'm glad, very, very glad to hear she's doing well. Um, I had put a link in uh, for uh, a loss that that we experienced this week. Yeah, big one. Yeah, uh, it, there were the it, the week began with pretty much with with um, rumors that uh, or not rumors but reports that James Horner's plane had crashed, and uh, and, and and apparently the person that was aboard it was badly burned. Wait a minute, was that this week? That was yeah, this week. That's oh this my week. God. That's how the this... week started. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long week. A lot it really has. has. When you when you when you say that, Mike, it, it was like yeah. that was wow. That yeah. was this week. It started with, with with the report of the plane crash and the body uh, that they found was badly burned. They couldn't identify it, and no one knew where James Horner was. But it turns out he was aboard the plane. So our condolences to his family. Uh, James Horner, as you know, he was the composer for many a Trek soundtrack. Yeah, two and three. So Wrath of Khan and Search for Spock. 
Um, and many films well beyond Field of those. Dreams. Yes. Glory. Kroll. Logan's Run. We were talking about Kroll, and he was the sound, the, the score composer for Kroll. And Something Wicked This Way Comes. Titanic. I mean, yeah. seriously. And, and a man of extraordinary Bear talent. McCreary wrote a beautiful piece uh, Did he on really? Playboy.com. And you know what's funny is that night I was playing World of Tanks, and I put the Star Trek Two soundtrack on, because it's on YouTube. And um, in one of those those weird moments uh it was right at the point when the reliant is attacking the enterprise yeah in world of tanks my tank came up over a hill and at that very moment that it goes dun, 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 there was an enemy tank oh so it was like timing. it was one of those things that like you, I couldn't have planned if I wanted to. It was it was just perfect. Oh, right. well. If there's anything, I think that most Star Trek fans would agree that the the Wrath of Khan soundtrack is one of the best in the genre in in the Star Trek book. And you can tell exactly what's going on in the movie, but that yes. might also be because I've seen it too many times. <laughs> but it's it's inspirational music. Everything he wrote was was great. I know that. Um, oh, the glory soundtrack track was the glory just, yeah. oh. he, he just it was I'm, I'm just i was bummed i was really bummed like i said on my tweet i said i uh you know two of my favorite soundtracks are star trek first contact and and apollo 13 and the reason why i like both of them so much is because there is a melancholy chord that they both kind of have in common where you're not sure if you're happy or you're sad and it pulls at your heart in two different directions apollo 13 has that and so does star trek first contact I cried when Goldsmith, who wrote Star Trek First Contact, I cried when he died. And now Apollo 13's um, writer has passed as well. So I, I don't know. For me, it was like I lost both of my guys, you know? <clears throat> well, and I don't know. Williams, nothing's allowed to happen to you. You you have to live forever now. Uh, well, I love his work too. It, it, but you know, the beautiful thing is you, we've got guys out there now like Bear McCreary. Yeah. Who, who are running. Michael and, Giacchino. Yeah. Who's doing and, everything? Well, yeah, between he and Bear McCreary. Yeah. The the the, oh, the, the music that he did for Battlestar Galactica, the, the reboot, is some of the most intense but yet minimal music. It's I amazing. Love- and he also does The Walking Dead, which you you know. Yeah. Well, he's it's amazing what he can do with one chord. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's the well, and not the other. But I like Giacchino because he. Un- how do I say? It? Bear McCreary has an amazing capacity for you. Using every instrument humanity has ever made. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where, oh, he also where, does Agents of Shield. Now that I think about it. Right. So where where he can use a an um, an Aboriginal um, instrument from Australia with bagpipes with yeah. you know something far more traditional and it all comes together in one cohesive thing. He's got that. Where Giacchino uses traditional musical instruments but can make them sound right. any way you want them to, and that's that's what I like about both of them is that they're both kind of achieve the same unique style depending on what they're but using completely different means to do so. I like that stuff. I, is there Tino, a composer, one of my favorite who? is there a composer right now um, that if Star Trek were to come back as a television series that you would have as your first choice to be the person to score it? Oh, I would have to. Yeah, you know what? I would have to say McCrary. I would love to see him be able to do it. Yeah, yeah. And I, he's I, he's I, I good at TV. That's the thing about McCrary. He, though, he, yeah, he's, he's so great. you. He's used so much, but he's got so much work. I don't want. I don't want to kill him. <laughs> no, and but doing TV is a far different than doing film. Yes, and he has that down. Yeah, I mean, he, he started off yeah. with Battlestar Galactica, right? I, I'm not sure if that was his first, but that was the one that brought him. That to my really attention. brought. That's the one that brought him to everybody's attention. Um, well, let's move on with some news. Patrick Stewart. Patrick yes. Stewart's going to score the new Star Trek series. Well, um, I wanted to talk about Patrick Stewart. <laughs> um, the, there's a pair of commercials for Strongbow Hard Apple Cider <laughs> so that he's funny. done. The first one, um, it's it's called the Award, and <laughs> in it he's holding up this giant medallion like award in front of his face, and when he pokes his head out from behind it, he's asked to to kindly put his you know to kindly hide behind it again. <laughs> funny, funny stuff. And the second one. Well, poor Patrick, he gets fired. 
<laughs> before it's, it's really funny even before the commercial really gets off the ground it's just hilarious so uh you gotta check those out uh funny funny stuff um let's talk about let's see okay let's talk about let's talk about the new movie let's talk about star trek 3 star trek movie news <laughs> Because there is some shit to talk about. So this week, a uh, Hollywood reporter, among others, Variety and others, have reported that Zachary Quinto and Christopher Pine have been contracted for a fourth film. This is Yay, news, congratulations. folks. Yeah, so the, we have multiple sources, too, and everything. Um, <clears throat> the Hollywood Reporter um, article goes into the fact that now they find they have they have received significant pay bumps for their follow-up films. I guess uh, Christopher... Uh, I guess uh, Chris Pine was, of course, an untested movie star and earned only only six hundred thousand dollars for Star Trek 2009, but is looking to uh, beam out, as they said, with six million for the new film. Pine was paid one point five million for Into Darkness and was to have been paid three million for the third film. Um, so, according to court documents filed in a 2012 lawsuit between his actor and his former talent agency, he's doubled his money, so he got more money. But what was tucked into this article that most people didn't catch and I had seen this week was the fact that Bad Robot producers are no longer executive producing. The fourth movie? They're not They're not executive producing the fourth movie? Or the third. Oh. According to sources, Paramount argued that J.J. Abrams directed the 2009 while well received was not a huge blockbuster. I'm <laughs> sorry, say that again? It says, according to sources, Paramount argued that the J.J. Abrams directed 2009 movie, while well received, was not a huge blockbuster, grossing 380. Uh, I thought that the 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 JJ Army has argued <laughs> the opposite. I grossing 385.7 million, which is a relative pittance compared to Paramount's billion please, that's, dollar trans. That's a Saturday for Jurassic World, which, by the way, <laughs> crossed a billion dollars this weekend. Did you know that? This really? is what I'm wow. saying. That's a Saturday for Jurassic I just, World. I'll tell you. So a relative, so Mission at both Transformers and Mission Impossible's uh, went to billion dollar grosses. So Transformers did. Not oh, bit. but that's also because of the overseas. And I want to. Well, this was global. Yeah, this is global. Yeah. So um, now, yeah, I want to say start in two thousand nine, barely broke even, if I remember correctly. It, it, they had a they had a one hundred and fifty was it one hundred and fifty million dollar budget, and they made three eighty global. Yeah, and then when you account for marketing, it's barely well, no, breaking that was, even. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably. I don't remember, Empire the door, Strikes right? Back still hasn't broken even. Yeah, but you don't want to. I'm still laying money down. How how many people want to bet that opening weekend of the next Star Wars, Star Wars films is billion? Be a billion. It's going to be a billion. Um, hey Terry, speaking yes. of um, Transformers, oh. did you see what I posted last night about Michael Bay? Yes, and we'll talk about that too. <laughs> okay, because I thought you would have an opinion. <laughs> All right, but the, the the news that came out for me, which is I saw this, I was like, okay, well, wait a minute. That's the second article I've seen that where two producers were being interviewed with regards to Star Trek Three or Star Trek Thirteen, as most of us understand it to be. We can just start calling it Star Trek Beyond. So these two producers were being uh, <laughs> uh, interviewed with regards to Star Trek Beyond, and I realized that their titles were executive producers, and I thought, well, gee, I thought J.J. and Roberto and uh, Bad Robot people were executive producing. So I did a little research, and sure enough, the IMDB reflects them as being producers only, but the executive producers are now Jeffrey Chernoff, David Ellison, and Dana Goldberg. Now explain to 
our audience what that means. That means Bad Robots out. That's uh, uh, because Sk- producers- Skydance Productions, right? It's Skydance Productions has come in. They are now the production house for Star Trek. We have because a whole the- new team, people. Uh, well, Terry, we may have people that don't understand the beyond the money aspect of providing the money for the film. The what else the producers, producers have do? have creative control. Mm-hmm. The executive producer on any film has ultimate creative control. Yes, even over the director. Executive producers hire the director. When they get a Best Picture uh, award out for the Academy Awards, they don't give it to the director. They give it to the executive producers because it's their movie. It's their beast. It's their thing. J.J. is out. Now, they can still be a producer because they were working on the original gut of the script and probably have some money invested in it, but it's they're no longer in control. So Jeffrey Chernoff, David Ellison, and Dana Goldberg happen to be the team that just finished Terminator Genesis. Terry, a cat just walked into this studio. Hi, T'Challa. Is it T'Challa? No. No. Oh, it's you're the not Thomas. there. It's a Thomas the cat. Oh, in the studio studio. Yeah, Hi. he walked in the Hi, studio. Thomas. Hey, hey so, my cat. So everything is, everything is, everything is different. Yeah, that, um, it, it, that happened real quietly. Real quietly. That happened very quietly. I mean, I don't even think it was on Trek Movie. Am I honest? <laughs> And and it was, but it was something that I had noticed because they had been interviewed yesterday with regards to the new Star Trek film and about how difficult it is and the legal wranglings that, that there are, that are in existence with regards to CBS and Paramount's relationship in going forward with a new television show. David Ellison and Dana Goldberg were interviewed by a, um, uh, I'll have to find the link. Matthew Anderson, somebody go find it, it, was it Slash Film? Slash Film. Okay. I, I have an, a similar article, but uh, the, the headline for this article is that they're going to be sh- shooting a portion of the film in Dubai. But right. in it, they do quote um, Goldberg and Ellison – uh, about it, and they do point out a lot of what you're 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 referring to. So that's my that's when all of a sudden the little flag started to raise, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, where's Mr. J.J. Abrams, who said that he's still going to be the pr- executive producer? Where is every the moment that Orsi was out, they were done. I was I I was very surprised they to had, find this they, out. So they had Sky nobody Dance left in. that was really involved with their original production. Well, it goes to show this is the the executive production team is the one who brought in J- uh, Simon Pegg brought in Justin Lin, they, they, they're they starting kind of fresh. And I'm actually getting twice as excited now about this movie, especially mm-hmm. since they just signed Quinto and Pine for a fourth movie, which means Paramount's excited enough about this script to say, you know what, we have a $15 million budget to bring a couple of actors in for the next one. So yay. I don't know. I, I was, um, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that is fantastic news. Um, wow, I did not realize the the, the full ramifications of that. Yeah. But yeah, good catch, Terry. Thanks. It was. Um, uh, is that why was, you've been drunk? I me drunk. God, you know I had a beer yesterday and. Well, still talking. You need to get to... into shape for STLV. Well, if one talk... beer is putting you on your ass, you need to start working out. You, you start lifting those beers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mike, you're going to be singing, right? Oh, I, I need to start practicing, but yes, yeah. that is the plan. Give our audience a little hint, a little, little taste. Koi ke les pouk. Okay, that's enough. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you, Mike. Um, yes, and well, I love you guys as well. But I yeah. know, I'm but, less than but... 40 days from singing with Adrian on stage, and don't think I'm not nervous. Oh, how fun. The, uh, and then the fi- the link that I just put into the chat room was um, a uh, the geek uh, geek.com article regarding uh, Star Trek Beyond locking down its URL as production begins. So what we had discussed last week and and probably we'll touch on this week. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, because there was a whole lot of more coming out. Yeah, it was kind of interesting, don't you think? Well, uh, mm-hmm. quickly before before we jump into that, uh, I want to share that, you know, a, 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 a trio of quick links. Um, first, uh, they, they production has begun on the third movie. That's what I just put. Okay. Uh, That's what they, I was saying. They, they started of off in, in Vancouver um, and at a, where, where is this, uh, a Canadian provincial park. Right. So, uh, so that was kind of interesting. Apparently, there's some Canada, some rock climbing involved. Native, but and then just ignore him. 
And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Dubai link, um, which I think I already shared. And then finally, uh, Quinto had posted on his Instagram and uh, elsewhere some photos. Did you see Zoe Saldana roaring like a cat? No. Or barking no. like a dog. Barking like a dog in the makeup trailer. No, I haven't seen that. I've not oh, seen God. that one. She's so funny. But yeah, some some first look photos have have, have been released about. Uh, well, everyone's in the makeup chair, but offering proof and evidence that you know production is underway. So it won't be long now. Hey Terry, mm-hmm. Janice had never seen Guardians of the Galaxy, so guess uh, what we watched yesterday? Yay! Right on. Now I fell asleep. Cause it's like the tenth time that I've had it on, but I woke up to her laughing hysterically at dance off, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Uh, uh, sorry. Sorry for the for the the no you're great. relevant squirrels, but um, no. I just yeah, wanted no. To put but those Zoe Saldana there. reminded me of Guardians. Um, right on. Okay, so is, beyond. Would you argue that she is? Because I was thinking of this watching it. She is one of our major action stars now, but who is a quiet rising star? Who? Zoe. Zoe. Yeah, I love her. But she she's doing it quietly. Like she's in a lot of things, but she's not overexposed. I'd agree with that wholeheartedly. Same with Chris Pine, even. Yep, yeah. And now he's did, getting money for it, which is and, good. And did you guys know that, um, oh, what's his name? Star Lord. The, uh, oh, Christ, the oh, actor. Christopher Pratt. Chris Pratt, he auditioned for the role of Kirk for J.J.'s tracks. I had heard about that one. Yeah, I think I think he would have been good. Yeah, but then again, I don't I don't see anything in that he's that I don't adore him in anyway. I just think that he's fun. He's I think he's going to be a great Indiana Jones. Remember, me, okay, remember my shock upon finding out about Barrowman? Yes, I had the same reaction. Did not know that he was married to that that Chris Pratt married to Anna Faris. Really? Yes. Wow. Right, Mike? I know. Wow. There you go. <laughs> And that, they are like cool. they are like a, a happy, happy couple. Yeah, right on. Just and if you guys don't know who Anna Faris is, she is hilarious. Okay, so <laughs> back to the bo- beyond yes. hoopla. The the beyond hoopla. Well, I wouldn't even call it a hoopla. Um, this week it was confirmed. Um, and and it wasn't just everybody else. It was Trek movie. It was seventeen oh one news. It was everybody else who finally went out and 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 pretty much confirmed what we believed to be the truth from the very onset. And that was uh, Mr. Gemelt, who said that he was invited to pitch his show, was more than likely. Well, we can't even say that. We here's the thing: the thing we beefed about last week, which was the lack of uh, a, a confirmed uh, counter source for Mr. Gemelt's story with regards to uh, his claim that he was invited to pitch a television series to to Paramount Studios, um, hasn't really been confirmed yet either. People have gone after um, CBS and have gone after Paramount looking for. Comments, and of course, haven't been able to get anything back. Um, be that as it may, something that was very telling was that Kayla Cavino from TrekMovie.com had gone back, had done a little bit uh, more research into her story, and went back to Mr. Gamelt and asked him a point blank blank question, and that was, can you know, was the reason why you were offered this uh, opportunity because you owned the URL Star Trek Beyond? And he refused to answer. No comment. It yep. was a big fat no comment, even though he had spent the past week going from podcast to podcast to podcast, touting about how he was invited, he was invited, he was invited, but never told people the reason why or would refuse to a- answer a question about the reason why he was, quote unquote, invited. Um, Which was so, speculated on correctly from day one. From day one. And yeah. and and it just so happens that, of course, by the end of this week, that URL has now been set into stone. It used to be his. It is now Paramount's. Paramount is using it and will be using it for the um, uh, for the promotion of the new film. So you can you can take it for what it's worth. And that was um, I, you know, it, do I it was. Oh, yeah, do, yeah, yeah, do we? Yeah, yeah. Do we? Do I want to go on to my rant or no? About no. Okay. Yeah, I think. I think. Well, you know, I think because I think in a broader sense, though, it's instructive. Okay, as long as it's not. No, it would never be. Okay, because there are I, some... because I adore too much. And 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 I like how Terry and I are having like three word conversation, and we both know exactly <laughs> totally what, we're, know what saying. we're saying. 
Well, the fact of the matter is everybody knows how disappointed I was in that original article. I had my beef about it last week. It was attacked upon by other people and 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 brought forward because there were some very interesting um and and it was handled by her. She went back and and while I wished to everything in a heartbeat that I wished that Paramount and CBS would have been able to say something, there probably is a, a non-disclosure agreement. Okay, right? what what Terry's talking about is I said earlier this week now those of you that listen to the show but may not know, I've been a journalist and a public affairs uh, specialist for 28 years. Right. Believe it or you not, I'm actually a, good at my job. Right. You edit a newspaper. Yeah, and I write articles and I do all of this. And one of the things you have to be careful of on the internet, yes. and, I, and and I'm this is why I'm specifically going to say, I don't want anybody to think I'm talking about a, a site person. in particular right. or a person in particular, especially a person that I admire and, and, and look up to as exactly. much as I do. Right. There are some things, if you're going to read internet websites, now I'm not talking like WashingtonPost.com or NewYorkTimes.com. I'm talking where you're on, where they're only present, where, right? And entertain. A lot of them are entertainment. Entertainment, based. yeah. Where the people may have no journalism training, True. but some of the best writers out there have no journalism training. Absolutely. But one of the things you have to look for is sourcing. Mm -hmm. The other thing is. <sighs> A critical eye. And, oh, boy, I don't know how to say it because I was I, – Terry and Mike can tell you I went on a tangent in the middle of the week with, with the G&T staff. Mm -hmm. Not not against them, but one mm -hmm. where I, I just talked about my, my vocation. Standards. I, yeah. Well, I talked, yeah, I talked about my vocation with passion, which I rarely do. Uh, <laughs> protecting sources is never an excuse unless it's something like the CIA black site story. Right. If it's something that has to do with a movie or a website or something like that, there is no protecting sources. It's just – it doesn't fly with me. Right. Either you didn't have the source or you're protecting it for no reason. And, or and that because – Sometimes on some of the websites – now, Terry, we have to give TMZ credit. TMZ will cite sources. Help. Oh, it, I, I, okay. they will yes. cite everybody as much because as it, I am not it fond gives of them their more tactics. clicks. <laughs> yeah, as much as I'm not fond of their tactics, um, they, they don't – They break a lot of news. They break the a lot world. of news, but, but they usually do it with, with credible ironclad sources. I'm going to use a complete hypothetical here. This has not happened. It is not happening, but I want to – <laughs> I, I, Matthew Anderson just cracked us up. Sorry. I, I want to give my example. Let's say that Dayton Ward, one of his original Star Trek novels, was being made into a movie. Yeah. And we knew this because Dayton told us, but we couldn't say that Dayton told us. Or it was being made into a TV show, and John Van Sitters confirmed it for us. But nothing could be said. But we, we broke it on the show saying we know this for a fact, but we can't say who told us. That's that would be shitty. I wouldn't do it. Right. I would not do it. Right. Because, yeah, because you're because nothing, then, there's right. really nothing, that, there's that really can nothing to base nothing it can, on. Yeah. Right. And if we, somebody it's said, just hearsay at this point. Right. Precisely. And if somebody and if somebody said, You gotta tell me and I said, I can't, I'm protecting my sources because it would be Date and, and John Van Sitters, who I consider friends, and I was protecting my friendship with them, that is not a reason to protect a source. You protect a source because you have an agreement, or you protect a source because it would put of them a legal into reason. Of now, a legal look, or someone's or, someone's life is in jeopardy or yeah. there. If this whole thing with Star Trek Beyond was because legally somebody couldn't say anything, but they told you Look, I you can't can say, say anything, but yeah, you know, um, I'm going to blink the light once if you're right, twice if you're wrong. And the light blinks once. Boy, Terry, all the president's men all the men. Actually, I was sitting there thinking of Mike, but whatever. Yeah. yeah. But that's a different story. Yeah, it I it was just um you know it, it was it was kind of a, a a what's killing me however though is that this week I'm still seeing a lot of um, secondary news sites like Christian News and amongst others that are taking the original story going woohoo look we're getting a new TV series and unfortunately now there is a the the the, the Star Trek fandom has been misled. There's a, there's a white and noise now. There is a white noise that been misled they think they're getting a new television series when there's no evidence that they're even close to that when we all know that david mack is already writing the new series <laughs> 
<laughs> do we, do and, we have a confirmed source on that? <laughs> I, I'm the confirmed source. And it, and it was just, it's a frustrating thing. And what I feel bad about is that it, what, what kind of made me angry and, and yet makes me happy is I'm, I'm kind of both pissed and, you know, I, there's a bunch of emotions that I have to say is from a personal bias. And that is, I am both repugnated by Mr. Gamelt's attempts repugnated? to create... Is that repugnant? A Rep- I don't think so. Repugnated? I I, I'm repugnant. Ladies and gentlemen, new to the dictionary I've made up from a the new GNT word. show. It's I am me. repugnated. I am repugnated. So it, I, he, it's repulsive. I, I find his 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 TMZ like attempts to create a a grassroots effort to support his fanfic idea kind of distasteful. It's like, oh, I'm going to take this and run with it because I know for a fact that it, what you need to do is is whip the 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 fandom into a frenzy and maybe I can get some support and maybe this can really happen. And yet at the same time, I'm admir- I, I, I find it very admirable that he's really going for it, right? Oh, I, I don't blame him one bit. I'm at the same to. time kind of kind of got a bad taste in my mouth and yet at the same time kind of going, I can't I can't diss him for it because you want he would your be stupid not to. Oh, I'm sorry. I would I well you know what I said. I'm there's now a lot of us going, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mike he, and I, Mike, he Mike just, brought it I'm, up. The GNT show is going to register 10,000 Star Trek names so that if the fourth movie, <laughs> they'd have to <laughs> pay us. But but here's the thing. I, I guess it's just a personal decision. And I can, and it is, and it was his very personal decision to, to do pretty much what we're all assuming was, no, I don't want the money. I want to pitch my show. Yeah, no, I'd go for the money. I, I personally would have taken the money because I would have been able to use that to a greater effect. Well, and for my but own fan unless, production. Unless, and for my own fan production. Unless what, Mike? Uh, unless Star Trek Uncharted is the premise of Star Trek 4. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, if he takes, I didn't even believe that one, but still. <laughs> if he takes the money, it can only help his production. Well, you would think. However, but here's the thing. You, you think you're continues offered, wouldn't take the money? But you're sitting there and looking at this going, this is my one and only chance. Now, you have to understand, is Mr. Gamel wrote a Star Trek video game. This is not a person who is unfamiliar yes, with we have the to genre. Be fair. We have to be yeah, fair. He, he, he's he, a professional he, writer and um and 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 has experience writing Star Trek for a published entertainment format. So, yeah, he made a, a he was a, a writer for a video game. Right. And and so to sit down and say, you know what? He he saw this as an opportunity, maybe maybe not to sell the story so much, but to get back in. Yeah. You, you know, I kind of don't blame him. I I really kind of don't blame him. Now, I'm I'm not but happy with the way What has this done what oh, has this done for his brand off. now? Well, it's pissed us all off, yeah. right? Which is you're you're telling everybody something that is technically true, but at its heart isn't. And that is you weren't invited. You got yourself an invitation. And now you can use the words, I've been invited. Blame it all on We my have roots. no idea how you got that invitation. And now he's refusing to talk about it. Showed up in boots. Ruined your black and I feel, And I there. just feel like he put the bull nose yeah. on and, and led people around going, oh, I got this invitation. I got this invitation. And you should hear some of the things he's talking about on on these podcasts where he's like, oh, I think that they saw my website and think, oh, it's, you know, this is really great. They saw his How website. How do we know right? that? Huh? They saw his website. All right. Yeah. yeah they saw they his saw website the words, because they were Star looking Star Trek, Trek and beyond. beyond. They wanted to, <laughs> yeah. They had it in their sites. All right. Just not. But the, the problem is, is that now all we're getting is his one sided point of view about these stories and he's refusing to talk about anything else and nobody can source and the other fair, side. If Star Trek Beyond website had been a goddamn porn site they still would have had their sights on it for those three words not for anything else well you and i know that and and the, the, the fact of the matter is nobody's been able to get a comment out of the company the, out of paramount well of course they're not gonna paramount's not gonna you know why do they want to they want to sweep this shit under the rug yeah. and 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 they just want to let it lie 
and uh, Gamel keeps going from podcast to podcast going, well, they saw my website and they thought it was really great. So they're going to bring me out to LA and uh, let me pitch it. And, and the, the root of that story is what was missing and still is quite frankly. And, but now that he has refused to comment about his, the purchase of the URL, it, it certainly sheds a lot more light on the, the probabilities that we will not see his idea as a Star Trek series because Paramount doesn't have the rights to make a, a series. They just don't. But you know what you know what else has come out of this? I'm even more but I don't want to I don't want this to sound believe it or not, I don't want this to sound pandering. But I'm also very happy with our relationship with Michael Hinman. I I'm, I'm happy with our relationship with everybody. Everybody, but I I, I mean from a journalistic standpoint. Yeah. I I was it, it was it, it was <sighs> It, it reminded me of my old professors. Yeah, it it was definitely a um, a, a challenge. It was definitely a challenge. <laughs> For us to, to, because we consider ourselves good friends with both of these sites, and we don't want to cause a riffraff. But the fact of the matter is, you know, it's like it, it, if I had, it, you know, I, I just, I had to call it. I had to call it. I was upset about it because we, really, we are not what, what I feared the most happened, and what I feared the most was now the, now the, 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 the. I don't want to say uneducated as much as I want to say the more naive Star Trek casual. public. And, and the, the casual, casual Star Trek fan is is still now getting links to the original the mm-hmm. original article that makes them believe that there is a chance we're getting a Star Trek series and that a Star Trek fan was serendipitously um, given a, a chance to pitch a show to a company that doesn't even have the right to make it and. Most Star Trek phones don't know that. They if, they they don't know that that it, that Paramount can't make the television. I'm sorry, so. but if if a Star Trek fan was going to be getting an opportunity to pitch their show, it's going to be ones that have proven that they can deliver. That's that right now. That Star Trek continues. That Star Trek New Voyages. And really, I hate to say it, but it. I don't even think they have a chance. Well, I mean, they, as- they don't. But I'm just saying, if anybody has the cred up, up to, at this point, it'd be those two productions. And, Possibly. Uh, it, you know, neither one of them are going anywhere. But you know, the point is, or the point I'm trying to make is, it, out of any fan production, those are the two that. Right now, I stand out, you know. But again, they're, they there are have no so chance. many insiders who are trying to make a new Star Trek show, right? Yeah. We've got Michael Dorn trying to make one. We have Star Trek Continues. We have Star Trek Axanar. We have uh, Star Trek Renegades, Phase Two: New so. Voyages, Renegades, uh, uh, Farragut. I mean, these are all amazing, passionate, yes. professional people making really amazing stories, and yet none of them have had a crack. And so, it, and there was just one. well. And let me say this about everything that's gone on, and, and regarding our show like terry said we're, we're friends with with the, all the parties that have been all involved the but our show is also predicated on we can't let our friendship get in the way of calling something out right and that's, and that's that the, we, we we treat that doesn't mean we don't like the pre- god no jesus but you know if and i'm only going to use him because he is such a great friend of the show if dayton did something really stupid we would have to call him out on it <laughs> I would and prove that Kevin was always the brains behind the operation. Say, All right, you know. honey, drink this first, then we're gonna talk. But it's yeah. true. It's it's true. There's, we were just disappointed in the way that the story was handled and came out and was uh, followed up because, on. And because blah. Trek Movie is a good web, it's a very good website for getting news for Trek. At times, it's the only site up until recently where we could get breaking Trek news. Now, recently, that's changed, and that's for the better that's yeah. only for the best for truck fans i agree it's it's good for all of us and and i'm i'm happy to say you know the that it looks like you know i just felt really bad for trek movie when they 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 asked the pointed question and got a big blank wall in return that must have been just a pisser that that just <laughs> I'm sorry. That must have just been a pisser for them to say, "Okay, Mr. Gamel, how did you get? Did it did it have anything to do with the transition of the URL from you to Paramount?" And he they got a big fat, 
I can't or won't comment on that. I'm like, really? Really? You know, that that had to have been a kick in the teeth. And that uh, that sucks. That just sucks. Yeah. So I'm, and, I'm and sorry shows, that you guys went through that. Uh, and it shows what an opportunist this guy was to use them and then and, to and turn around the and say. Time, like I said, can you blame him for being an opportunist? No, but to treat the reporter yeah, that's like what that. Pissed me off. And maybe it bothers me because the reporter I like so much. So very much. Level. Right. It's true. It's very, very true. Well, I think we've beat that dead horse and we'll be done with it. Then, Mr. Gamelt, you deserve uh, <clears throat> some wet. He got, he got his 15 minutes. Now, he hopefully, got it. He, we, we move on to the next news story. And um, if it involves him, I'm going to be asking people. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so. Uh, because we mentioned uh, Captain Worf, uh, yes. something that, that came out this week was, is the fact that um, Michael Dorn revealed uh, the official title for the Captain Worf series. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Apparently Captain did, Worf was the name of the pilot, but according to an interview that he did uh, – uh, with uh, Cinema Source, the official title of Captain Worf is Star Trek: The Next Generation. Captain Worf. <laughs> it's like, let's put in no, the Worf Chronicles. The Worf, Worf Chronicles. Excuse me. Thank you. Yes, the Worf Chronicles. It was like yeah. what? <laughs> no. Why don't we? And, it? Uh. Yeah. <laughs> and my first reaction was, and thankfully, uh, Mike and Terry both agreed with me. I don't like a character's name in the title. I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. I. It's not. It's not a about it's not about an individual it's about the whole and it's a, we would never say the Kirk Chronicles or the Picard Chronicles or the Janeway Chronicles it's more about it's it's a, a, about more than them and yeah. well yes Captain Worf is a great idea and the idea of, of he Worf may be the anchor, captain, but he's not the point he shouldn't part be of the me point. thought it would be really cool if he was still you know uh, if he was the captain of say the Defiant A you know uh, you Terry I was it, thinking about it your idea of Star Trek Defiant yeah. I don't think they would go with that because it's too close to the series that's Defiant. Defiance, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're right about close. that. But it would have to be something strong like that, right? A, a, the, yeah, the name of a ship. The, that impact. The name yeah. of the ship, the name of a, you know. Uh, a a, a person, not, not, not really a person, but a place or a major Or an thing. idea or a feeling. Yeah. Or like, so, you know, Star Trek Kittimer. How cool would that sound? That could work. Yeah. Referencing the, the peace treaty as well yeah. as, you know, the, the after affects the 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 uh, that you know the Kittimer Accord allies are now you know kind of sort of dealing with yeah I can see that I, I mean, yeah, I'm just throwing that out as a as an example of, of a word that's such a strong Kittimer you know, Thomas, hey, did you see Kittimer this weekend? Thomas says it just seems like such an ego project for him. It's really hard to take seriously. Isn't yeah. it? It's, it's, yeah. it's true. I, I, but in I other Dorn news. I or more, scroll up. I, I put something in there for you. I have some Dor more Dorn news. Um, apparently, <laughs> Ted 2, he reveals his role in, in Ted 2 um, on Star StarTrek.com. And apparently, he is... He, <laughs> Him and Patrick uh, Warburton. Um, love him. I love Patrick Warburton. I love him. I love they, Patrick they play, Warburton. They play the most horrible gay couple you've ever <laughs> seen. They are physically abusive to each other. They're horrible creatures. Uh, it's actually funny. It's a, actually a funny bit, and it, and and he likes uh, lo likes it because it's not a caricature. So <laughs> that's I, so oh my god. Mean spirit, I would. Mean spirited, uh, not nice people. <laughs> too, too funny. Too so, funny. And N Nana Visitor, because we mentioned her earlier, she's also got a role in Ted too, and it was a surprise to both of them that they were in the, in the film together. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I just thought I'd share that real quick. Well, that's Seth MacFarlane's love. Of yeah, he Star just he's yes. so so so. As a matter, that's the, uh, the is that the Esquire article, Mike? That, that was a Star Trek dot com. Okay, I have one. From Esquire that said how Seth MacFarlane turned the bro skewing Ted Two into the apex of his Star Trek fanaticism. So oh, it's, cool! Right on. Um, so that link is in the chat room right there. Um, very, very funny. Very interesting. I mean, this guy, I, he's. I, I'm. I'm not kidding, people. I know that he has a raunchy sense of humor. I know that he's. <laughs> But I'll tell you, he makes every Star Trek fan. I mean, he's on level. He is on level with. with he's his, legit. His, he is so legit. Hey, hey that if, he, if he there was, was if there was one person, if there was one person who could truly do a new television series, justice, King Abdullah it's Jordan. Seth, but 
Joaquin McFarland. And he was in Enterprise. And King Abdullah of Jordan could fu- could could executive produce it. Although that would just raise a bunch of fucking issues now, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, Terry, Terry. Yes, sir. Y- you want to you want to hear the sound of uh, Star Trek fans' heads exploding? Oh yeah. Seth McFarland doing the next Star Trek series as a sitcom. Oh yeah, I would have to say my head ex- would explode. It, people but either Seth explode would with joy, or there's people out there who just. They're, they're screaming like Kirk in the cave now. Yeah. Because they're <laughs> angry at even the idea. <laughs> Just the of idea Star of Trek is a comedy? We can't do that. But see, that's the beauty of Seth MacFarlane. He would never do that. He would never do that. No. He has too much respect for the. the he would the do it as material. a bit, unlike Fallon. Oh, God, yes. But he would never do if he was if If somebody actually handed him the key to Star Trek. <laughs> As a TV series, I think he would shit his pants, then pee, and then I cry. I would love to see him being interviewed and asked about that. And if he you would could take do it, it so seriously. Would you do a too. serious? There yeah. he is. Wow. Yeah. And that's wow. Look how much weight he's lost since then. Yeah, he's lost a lot of weight. Further, never mind. I won't say it. <laughs> you, you know what I was going to say, right, Terry? <laughs> Not saying a The rumors about him? Oh, no. What, oh, did, well. what do they say about any guy that's good looking and a song and dance man? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, there's been rumors about that about him for years. Sweet. Isn't he married? <laughs> I thought he was married. Doesn't matter anymore, does it? Ah! No, guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I uh, really uh, wish they would let him do with Star <laughs> Trek like they did with Star Wars. I'll tell you, JJ was the ultimate Star Wars fan. I think this movie, I think the new Star Wars film no, is just going to be Family grossly Guy. amazing. With Family Guy. I wish they with would that. let him do like they did with Star Wars, with Lou Harvest, to do Wrath of Khan with the Family Guy cast. Oh, how funny. I would love that so much. Because what would Meg be? She'd have to be the earworm. She'd have to be the Seti Alpha Eel. <laughs> because he always finds the worst thing for Meg. Meg she was right. the trash compactor monster. She was the damn thing in the asteroid, the, a- the monster in the asteroid. And wasn't she the Tauntaunt? No. She, and what was she for the Jedi? I don't remember. But she would have to be the Seti Alpha Eel. That's really funny. <laughs> uh, Kate Mulgrew. Yes. Uh, Kate Mulgrew, uh, let's see, because of uh, her role as Red in Orange is the New Black, um, she has she has let's see the the title is uh orange is a new black star gives back with acting program for rikers island inmates and apparently she's starting up a a theater training i don't i don't know how, what you call it uh, a program at at a prison to kind of sort of help you know these prisoners you know uh, uh i can't think of the word um but kind of sort of help them, you know, learn learn a new skill and, and, and become a little bit more uh, productive. And she's using acting and theater to kind of sort of do that. And I think that's kind of cool, considering, you know, the role that she's been been playing um, in Orange is a New Black. <laughs> that's really cool. I love her. I do. I adore her. Neat, neat lady. I'm sorry. I was just thinking, I was just sitting here thinking about David Lynch doing Star Trek. Although... Go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, Kyle McLaughlin as a Star Trek captain would be pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, you were, Mike, you were going to say something? Yes. Go uh, for it. I was going to, to point out uh, or ask if you guys have seen William Shatner's motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> that thing looks pretty sick, though. Uh, so he's uh, he's going to be driving from, or he is currently driving from Chicago to Los Angeles in a prototype motorcycle that he helped build. It's a trike. It's, it's pretty awesome looking, I have to admit. Real comfortable, I, I think. Um, all looks like it's all chrome and it's got these big old fat bolts on it. I don't know. It, it looks, it looks, it looks pretty cool, but, uh, yeah. So uh, apparently there's going to be a documentary. <laughs> so he, he, he goes in, he, he, he builds a bike or has someone build a, a custom bike for him. And the big deal is that he gets to drive it home. <laughs> 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 is this oh the same God. laugh mike you had when i shared that incredibly <laughs> wrong picture no that, that was I a totally will... different one but <laughs> that picture let me let me let me say something to our audience I love mike's laugh i shared something with with terry and mike this week that is so wrong i will i won't even share it with you guys it's so wrong incredibly wrong <laughs> no don't share it then no i'm not you know what i'm talking about terry oh yeah that's wrong yeah that was wrong but that was wrong and mike laughed for 20 minutes I, well 
You caught his giggle. You, you caught well, his giggle bow. Because after you everything that I've been because, going through this week, I needed oh, to laugh. It's and it so just wrong was perfect. That you it can't was just... help but laugh at it. And then when you realize what you're laughing at is so wrong and that your first reaction was to laugh, that you can't help but laugh some more. Mm-hmm. And then when you look at it again and you realize this is maybe the most offensive thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. It's so yes. it's so offensive, people. I said, Jesus Christ, that's offensive. <laughs> <laughs> but i laughed my ass off oh, you did but yeah so um yeah so he's <laughs> uh, that, that that's you know documentary worthy is him driving his bike home <laughs> that's great uh and yeah. as starfleet mom said apparently he's dry he's riding through new mexico today she says that we we should wait at the intersection of the I I I forty and I twenty five. He's bound to pass by, right? I said, Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up a sign, go Bill, go. <laughs> That'd be awesome. By the United Federation of Planets flag. Yep. There is a a great little article in a, a, a local paper with focuses on our good friend Mike Tripp. You guys don't know. Who oh, he is. cool. That, isn't that great? Where right it's on. an article that he got to write for the news leader uh, in in his uh, in his local area that, that talks about the Valley Comic Con in Augusta County uh, that was being held at the Augusta County Library in Fishersville. Now, Mike is a photographer, a news photographer, and he got to write this article about what it was like to attend a local convention uh, wearing his Star Trek uniform and taking photos of the little local convention and his daughter and how their uh, share of cosplay has kind of brought them closer together. It's a wonderful little article, some great photographs that were taken by Mike. And uh, congrats, Mike. This is just a really sweet um, reminder of why we all go to conventions, and that's to be around others who are like us and to share and to accept us regardless of how crazy we look. And uh, and it's just, it was really, it's a very sweet thing. So catch right that. It's very cool. Yeah, I kind of tripped across that. Uh, Trip. Pardon the pun. <laughs> pardon the pun. Uh, uh, I tripped across that this morning. So he he also play uh, on on Gates of Stovacore. He plays the role of Hawuk. If anybody was wondering um, uh, about that, so yeah, so kabla, awesome, yep. very yes. very awesome. That is cool. Right on. Um, what else we got? We do have a uh, a couple of you know how every week they come out with the uh, Eek Tyrant or Cracked or Io Nine or somebody come out with like the top ten some something or other or whatever. Mm -hmm. This week it is Star Trek video offers us a history of the Borg. This is a geek tyrant. Uh, You can check that out at your leisure. And then Cracked gave us the five ways Star Trek was rebooted wrong. (laughs) And it's kind of, I mean, both, both are very interesting. The Borg thing, because um, they, 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 they take lines, you know, off, off handed remarks that were made throughout Star Trek regarding the Borg and they connect dots and they kind of infer, you know, okay, so this is where shit started happening or when, you know, so it's it very informative. And the, I, can, I have to say the cracked article about the five way Star Trek was rebooted wrong was also interesting because they reference, they use, <laughs> Thunderbirds as <laughs> as as their yeah. ideal. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, both I thought were very worthwhile to check out. Um, and I have to say, they're not really all that wrong. <laughs> they so, were, yeah. yeah, check them out. the The links are in the chat room, and they'll be in our show notes. Also, uh, the finally, there is one uh, one article that I thought was very sweet. Io Nine, one of Io Nine's. Uh, writers james whitbrook wrote an article a couple of days ago called my secret nerd shame i've never watched star trek the next generation so here's this guy who gets to write about star trek and he, he's never seen tng so what's great is that the i have fuck a does few, that happen i don't know but the lucky bastard you know the the fact is is that i think that we're actually going to be enjoying uh his take on um on the next gen in the in the coming future for uh now that he's going to sit down and start watching it so i thought it was kind of neat to see it as a a guy who was brought in his gateway star trek was voyager oh so so yeah he he missed he missed he missed a lot of trek 
Right. So after Voyager, he watched TOS and DS9, but he never did really watch TNG. So he's going to... So it's interesting to see how a fan will come in, what their gateway... It's like a lot of fans I know who, who Enterprise was their first show. Mm-hmm. That's why they're so they're such big fans, right? They yeah. weren't Star Trek fans, but Enterprise brought them in and they love Enterprise. And I can, personally, I can understand why, because I loved Enterprise. Um, and, and now they're going back. It's the same reason why Nick and I and Mike all argue. It's like, yeah, you may not like J.J. all that much, but the fact of the matter is the movies brought in a lot of new fans and they're starting to see the original series and they're finally beginning to understand what it was that, that brought us all together to begin with. So regardless of the, the format of, of Star Trek, the, the fact of the matter is after you, you see that there's so many different kinds and so many different people we, we still find a common thread. We still find a common thread. Yep. So you don't have to love the movies. You don't have to love Enterprise. Yeah, because it's all Trek. And, and you know what? I, I, I've, ran, I've ranted and raged on the show before about fans who, who, who go on and, and they say that, that the new films are not Star Trek. You know, you, you're very – those people are being very close-minded. They're, they're not – they're not accepting the fact that here's a whole slew of new fans that are going to be rediscovering, right? You know everything that Star Trek is, and and although they uh, the new films may have brought them in, but I think it's the the, the what has it's come the before sh- that's going right. to keep them coming the back. Show. I really do believe the same thing. I mean, how many of even when we were in Las Vegas and we're talking to the young kids who were cup who who came in and were wearing the the JJ uniforms and you talk to them and they're like. Oh, we love the movie. We love the movie. And now I bought, I bought the DVDs of the original series, or I'm now watching the original series on Netflix, or I'm seeing TNG on Netflix. And now I'm the, and now I, I, I'm learning about all of these characters that I never knew existed before. I mean, that's, that's, that's awesome. You can't beat yep. that. You can't be, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Justice Scalia, you are a dirty, dirty boy. Uh, uh, some quick Kickstarter news, if please. you don't mind. Yep. Um, the documentary for the love of Spock. Uh, they have three days to go, and they have they've raised five hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars out of their six hundred thousand dollar goal. I really want to see this made, so please contribute. Get the word out. You know, tweet it, Facebook it. You know, smoke signal it. You know, just get the word out um, because I think it's a it's a a, a great project and. And I, there's not a lot of time left, and they still have a long way to go. So, um, for for the love of Spock, let's get make get this thing made. <laughs> I agree. What else you got going for Kickstarters? There's a couple of them. Well, um, Captain Pike is still going on. I don't have that one in front of me, but I can yeah, get it. Yeah, and they're and they're no longer on Kickstarter, right? They're on. It's um, on Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Um, let's see. New voyages. Uh, they have five That's hours. Right. Um, they, they, they've out of their twenty thousand goal, twenty thousand dollar goal that they've reached forty five thousand, so they they've already reached their their goal. Um, they're working on fifty thousand for sick bay, so um, they need, like I said, about another five grand. So definitely support them. Um, let me see what else is on the Romulan War anthology. Uh, the um, the technical manuals for um, the Romulan oh, War yeah, and the Four yeah. Years War, they're on fire i mean 29 days to go <laughs> they only needed 2100 and they're at 14,334 i mean this is amazing um and this is you know a book series that uh, a fan wanted to, to put together and he must be doing something right because he's just smashed his goals um so yeah uh that's definitely going on still plenty of time there if you want to to get involved uh, you can even pick up his previous works, the the Four Years War, uh, with the, the the which tells the story of uh, Klingon, uh, the Klingon and Federation War, with you know which includes the the, the battle at Axanar, among others. Um, so yeah, check check that out. And let me head over to Indiegogo. So one second. Sure. Well, Mike gets that. Uh, He's Indiegogoing. He's Indiegogoing. Yes. Indiegogoing. <laughs> Doing the little dance, shaking my fists. 
Okay, so uh, Captain Pike, um, they had a fifty thousand dollar goal. They, they're sitting at fifty two thousand right now. So they hit their their initial goal. Good for them. So we're going to be getting a thirty minute Act One film. Um, of course, if they get get more, they can do more. Um, right. So they they want to they, they they have a two hour script. I think is what it is, uh, or a ninety minute script. Uh, for is what they ultimately want to do, but they have 11 days uh, remaining. So uh, help support that. I'm eager to see this because it's a, a different, it's a different story. It takes place before Kirk and Spock, although Spock is in there. <laughs> um, but again, it's uh, I think it's an interesting idea. Uh, the, the the premise being huh. get, getting to see uh, Spock or excuse me Pike uh, leading up to that first. Uh, the, 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 the pilot uh, the, the, where we first meet him. So um, great cast. So yeah, a lot of professional actors involved. That'd be cool. Very, very cool. I hope they get it done. Nick uh, had shared a link earlier yeah. uh, this week. You want to talk about that, Nick? Did you want to talk about that, Nick? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll share it. There you go. Yeah, l- yeah like you said earlier on, there was a lot going on uh, this week. And yeah. So, so Terry, had you seen this? I did, and and you know, like I said, I tend to look at these things from a pragmatic point of view. And uh, there's some, it's, again, to me, there's something. Where did it go? What a shitty sight! It really is. <laughs> oh my god! How do you get to where you need to go? Oh well, we want to talk. Well, seen as though we can't seem to find the fucking article. Um, <laughs> Well, do you want to touch on what it was with regards to Rose? Rose McGowan uh, called out. Um, hold on, let me see if I got something else. It it was a um, a casting call, uh, an an audition slip, and an audition slip. It kind of lists uh, what your character is supposed to be about, what you're supposed to wear when you go to the audition, and um, uh, you know something that that you know that outlines the general idea of what the character you're supposed to be playing is is like, or you're supposed to be portraying. And the unfortunate description of the the, uh, the character and what what was required of female actresses or just actresses, not actresses, um, to come in to prepare for the role were um, I had have it posted. In front of me. Yeah, she had. Po- oh, you have them. There I have it in front of me. You. It says, please make sure to read the attached script before coming in so you understand the context of the scenes. Wardrobe notes. Black or dark, form-fitting tank t- tank that shows off cleavage, push-up bras encouraged, and form-fitting leggings or jeans, nothing white. And so she tweeted this and said, casting note that came with script I got today. For real. Name of male star rhymes with <laughs> Madam Panhandler. <laughs> <laughs> now... She put this out as a comment on this is what actresses have to deal with with regards to your roles. Nothing about the context of the character, nothing about where they're supposed to be coming from, nothing about the, you know, not other than you're really only coming in to see if your tits are good enough. Really, that's what that was. Yeah. And so she posted that, and apparently, because she posted it, which is probably a breach of a non-disclosure agreement, right? She got she got pulled from consideration. She got fired by her agent. Yeah. And fired by her agent because she breached uh, what what probably was a non-disclosure agreement. This is how you keep that. Now, non-disclosure agreements are 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 used for for very specific reasons. However, in Hollywood, they are used to keep the sexism and misogyny from making it to the public. So Rose McGowan did. She, she broke a rule. She broke a rule. Oh. But she, to be honest with you, she didn't say anything out there that you know what people don't already know. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, this but is it's, this it's is what women state. have to deal with in Hollywood. Yeah, but it's but it's sad that the the fact is that th- there was absolutely nothing else that that they really wanted or needed to to qualify her for a role other than the way that that's what her, bothers me about it that, yeah. and it and it really was and that's what bothered her about it that's what made yeah. her go oh my god this is so stupid i have to say something this is so stupid i have to say something because this has nothing to do with any kind of character it doesn't give me any kind of clue as to who this woman i'm supposed to be playing is supposed to be like it has everything to do with it doesn't matter how good an actress you are it has everything to do with whether or not 
She's a piece of meat. Yeah. She's well, a piece women of meat in Hollywood are. Yeah. Women in Hollywood that's, are. A lot sad. of actors in Hollywood are. I don't want to say anything else. I mean, I don't want to say anything otherwise because a lot of actors are as well. There are, you know, if you need a beefcake guy, right? They're going to get the same kind of a thing. Well, so make sure you have a six pack. Make sure you have this. Make sure you have that. And then you get to. You know, that's why they build in um, weight goals into your contracts is that you can't you can't be more than, you know, I I would love to see what Zoe Saldana's contracts have in it with regard to how much she's allowed to weigh. Seriously, there's weight goals. You can't you can't exceed so much in, in weight. You can't exceed so much. I mean, if this this here right now is telling anybody who's a B cup to, to not even apply. To don't even come in because if why would you need a push up bra unless you're a B cup and they want really big cleavage but they're not it's also telling women who have big boobs don't come in because what we're looking for is that small petite with push-up bras which you can get the cleavage in if you can take your little a titties and push them together you know what makes me really sad about this too um the fact that a jennifer lawrence or um scarlett johansson or uh, zoe or um all of whom are a very specific body type with, with but with what they've accomplished this is what they have to put up with absolutely and rose mcgowan too we're talking about an amazing actress right and also director and producer and right. writer right rose mcgowan is amazing right and and it has nothing to do with her talent it has nothing to do with how good she is at what she does it has nothing to do with her ability to portray a character write or direct or anything. It has everything to do with whether or not she meets this physical mold that was needed for that movie or was wanted for that movie. I don't want to say needed because nobody needs it. Uh, and, and and the fact that uh, a Scarlett Johansson who, um, let's see, she's only part of the biggest franchise in the world right now. Um, and she carried a science fiction movie to a huge opening as a woman. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. With Lucy, that she would get asked something like this, yeah. or 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 Jennifer Lawrence. You it's know? just it's standard operating procedure, and it's sad and it's frustrating. And I know that a, a lot of women are finally starting to come out and have discussions about it. I know that there's been a few roundtables with some amazing actresses and directors and uh, talking about the the misogyny in Hollywood. It's going to come out more and more. More, and people are going to get frustrated and a lot of people we need more joss the, whedon's a, a lot of people who are going to come out and mark my word you're going to hear the gamergate mentality come out oh, like yeah. just shut up and just shut up because we don't want to rock the boat they want to keep things the way they are because they see nothing wrong with wanting a beautiful woman do you think chris pine gets something that says yes come in in a black speedo uh, uh no not now yeah that's what i mean no but but i janice do believe the that other janice on the other side of the room turned around and said do you think that's nice. Hoffman would get a role. But yeah. Janice, Janice turned around and said, that would be nice. <laughs> but see, uh, Yes, I do think Dustin Hoffman would, because look at somebody like a Philip Seymour Hoffman before he no, passed, No, 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 no. Yeah, but sh do you think Philip Seymour Hoffman would get a role? Yes, because look at Zach Galifianakis. See, that's the thing. G guys like like mm -hmm. Zach and, and Seth, uh, what, what's his name? Um, Seth Rogen? Rogen. I, sure, Seth has lost a lot of weight, granted. But, but Seth Rogen also produces a lot of his stuff. Yes. He has to make it on his own. True. and But, but, but oh, here's a great example. Jonah I, Hill. Terry, I would yeah. say yes because look at Jonah Hill. Even Adam Sandler. Yeah. But I, I love – what's her name? Um, she was in Spy. She's in Mike and Molly. Melissa McCarthy. I love her. and um, But is she being cast as a romantic lead or as no. the – but, was, but then again, she's The only comedian. reason why they, they made Spy was so they could make fun of the fat one. Woman. I'm sorry, yeah. that's what that was about. And I know that she's trying to say that, you know, that it's otherwise. But the fact of the matter is, is that she uses the the, the self-deprecation of her body type mm -hmm. as a way to, to, it's the antithesis of what's going on I mean, what was the Hollywood. basis of Mike and Molly? Two really fat people falling in love. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying anything they didn't say on the show. <laughs> but it's, it's a... Uh, it's frustrating. I mean, if Melissa Mc and here's the other thing is that you have to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be, is she going to be cast? You, as, you have uh, to be to be ugly in Hollywood. You have to be funny. Yep. Yeah, and that's male or female. So it's Melissa McCarthy, Adam Sandler. It doesn't, or, you know, Rogan and, and the Adam others. Sandler's you have to be ugly, funny. Though. Would you classify Adam Sandler? As I ugly? don't see him as a Chris Pine. Oh no, no. But that's that goes back to that goes back to forever. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking see, by Janice Hollywood standards. Average. Adam Sandler is not. Here's the other thing. Adam Sandler gets put up against a, a woman who I think is absolutely adorable, right? In in all of the romantic comedies and um, Barrymore, in, and I think she's freaking adorable. 
Oh, right? Drew Barrymore is a doll. And, she is um, a doll. But again, it's, you know, it, the, the girl's got to be prettier than the guy. Well, and their chemistries, even well, in their bad movies, is great. their yeah. chemistry is good together. It's really, really good. I agree. I love Adam Sandler. I really do. He makes me laugh. He's pissing a lot of people off lately because the movie that they're filming here yeah. in New Mexico did not go well. Um, every Native American who was on it walked off the set. But I think of the girl that's in Two Bro Girls and she was also in Thor. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but see, yeah. People she's, playing, that call her, she's playing to a pe- type. No, but people call her heavy. Yeah, I know. Isn't that no, pathetic? she's curvy. Isn't that pathetic? There's a difference. But see, that's the thing. Roseanne is is was heavy. And I'm not dogging on Roseanne. She was heavy. He was. That girl is curvy. There's a huge difference. J-Lo is curvy. That's why she's beautiful. Who was it that didn't get a role because she was considered to be too old? And it well, was you a... Could yeah. a list there. It was... It, 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 but she just thought it was somebody big. And she was supposed to be too... She was supposed to be the wife of a 50-year-old man. And they told her she was too what old. was she, 30? He was 45. Oh, dear God. And... and but they wanted actresses, somebody in their 20s, yeah. Now you've got actresses like... Um, Oh, 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 God. I'm blanking on her name, and I absolutely love her. Um, She was in 12 Monkeys. She was in that Western with Drew Barrymore. She was, um, oh, my God. Can't say I know. Yeah, you you would if I... Madeline Stowe. Oh, okay. You've got actors like Madeline Stowe, uh, Anne Archer, um, amazing actresses who, oh, dear God, they're in their late 40s, early 50s. Cool. And and a lot of that is just because that's what we demand, right? It's it's, it's no, that attitude. No, that's what the producers demand. Well, it's also what sells. But that's because We have that's, to go to the root of the problem, and the root of the problem is get. the fan, is the, is the people who buy this stuff. But the problem... And is, is that's what we're being offered, so we go to it, but we don't know that if Ann Archer was offered the lead in something that we wouldn't go because it, we're not being allowed. Or Dana Delaney. Oh, Dana Delaney is a great example. I love Dana Delaney. So beautiful and small. This yeah. just and goes tight. to show that although we have come pretty far There's in recent weeks, of work that needs in, to be in terms of Vidic. We still have a long, long way to go. Long way. Yep. I do want to get a couple of things in. I know we started a little late today. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about Stow News. Oh, ready? I want to play Star Trek Online. Engineering here. Warp engines are online. Course laid in, Captain. Engage. Your ship. Your crew. Your destiny. Uh, I was actually quite excited to see this. How about you, Mike? The Delta Fleet holding? Yeah. Fleet's got something to do again. Woohoo! That is very cool. Um, and, you know, again, the, the I've seen some chatter about another... Another, another dilithium sink or another sink, but I'm 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 generally pleased. Um, I'm seriously hoping that you know um, uh, that star that the alliance is going to be sneaking out some temporal shields out of there because and and you know putting them around their planets. <laughs> <laughs> Well, some, what was really funny is I saw somebody on um, on a chat room or a forum or something where they made this comment and I had, I kind of had to laugh because it was one of those duh moments, one of those, you know, like duh, <laughs> where the person came out and said, oh, I think um, all of those Delta recruits now are just, uh, you know, temporal, they were all temporal recruit, And I'm like, duh. Duh. <laughs> That that's what's that, going to help you win the, the that war. That was the whole storyline. The, the, the whole storyline is the fact that you've got temporal recruits now, the Delta recruits that that know something that your previous characters didn't. I love this layering of story, and and this guy's like, oh, I, you know, now we've got these Delta recruits, and and oh, what do you think that they're going to be, you know, recruited into the the temporal? And I'm like. What what about the first moment of you recruit making that Delta recruit and understanding and speaking with the temporal investigator? Did you not understand? 
<laughs> you have a you're device talking now. to yourself from the future <laughs> a year and a half from now and he's saying dude they, you're gonna see some shit here you're gonna <laughs> see some and not the least of which is we need you to go through this because it's going to help us win the war against the iconians and you just and you and you're just now realizing oh gee i'm my delta recruit is going to play a role in this <laughs> Too long, didn't read. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now, just, hey, Thomas is in the chat room. We yes. need to get Zero in the chat room. Yeah. You know why? It's Sunday. She's sleeping. You, you know why, though? Mm-hmm. She's Zero. She's Zero. So she's I'm actually awesome. very... Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying she's awesome. She's, she's, awesome. she's the best. She, she was a better roommate than Thomas, but don't tell Thomas that. <laughs> Thomas was never in your room. What are you talking about? And he'll, he'll no, Thomas came in in, in the show, seconds. if you remember. <laughs> I do remember. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that, uh, speaking of Delta Recruits, I finally uploaded full res versions of the Delta Recruit posters. <gasps> oh, my God, Thomas. Thank you. Oh, Wait, is thank you, finger thank you, in there? You. What the hell was that? You haven't seen these Those posters? Those posters are awesome. No, I know. I was looking away. I'm just saying. Oh, okay. The, Click it, on the, the link. Oh, my God, these posters. So the Mako poster is awesome. It'll be I in our the, notes. These are these are very cool. The Klingon one is just awesome. Love, 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 love. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, sir. Uh, the Delta can we have some more? The the Romulan one is genius. Isn't it beautiful? I'm I just thinking love it. on. You know how I have my Romulan tattoo on my right leg. Yes. And I'm gonna have the new one of my upcoming tattoos will be the new Romulan uh, bird yes. on the other side of that leg. And then I'm thinking of having in the Rihansu language that's in that poster uh, the word honor going down the back of my calf. Oh, cool. But in the shape of a blade, the honor blade, the same. Um. Thomas, Thomas, <laughs> Thomas we may have to talk about you designing something for me, and I will pay you. And not the least of which is Thomas, the, another friend of mine from the Ferris Anomaly, who you may or may not know, wants to get a high-res version of uh, Commander the Boobs. What's her name? Tapine, you know? <laughs> See, Commander the Boobs. Really? The Boobs. Well, that's, the where, boobs. that's what I named her. To Boobs, Tapine. She's tipping over. Tapine. You know who I'm talking about, <laughs> right? The, yes. The logo that they used for Star Trek Online I for know, a while? Star Trek. I've always uh, called Vulcan. her Commander. Huh. Ah, to be. And her. Commander. De- However, de- here's the thing. Is we need a high-res version of her because, um, or just a decent version of her because um, uh, the other half of the Ferris Anomaly wants to take her and he wants to make a tattoo out of her. Nice. So I need that for him. So th- Target. That's it. <laughs> You know what? That's a good she idea. Isn't. You know what? Oh. I'm just thinking instead of get instead of getting the new the new bird on the other side, although I really want that, having her on the other side. He's cool. Or, or to uh to list. Ooh. Get I, I do a screenshot with a really high res of her. Well, I Ooh. just need to get that. I just so Thomas, if you don't mind, email that to me. That would be great. I'll forward it on to Jim because he wants to get a tattoo. Probably he usually gets them in Vegas, so Yeah, um, usually. And then last but not least, before we go, just to uh, bring us up to up to speed on the upcoming conventions, shall we just start right off the bat with a um, Las Vegas update? Are, is, are we still talking Vegas, right? Uh, we are. We're talking oh, about Vegas. yes. You're coming to Vegas, right? Star Trek Las Vegas may take place every August, but on this show... <laughs> this is where we hang out the rest of the year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the crew has been fatigued now from so many months in space, and they need to Take a break. The landing party has been down to check out the terrain while the crew gets ready to play. They say there's only plant life living on this lovely rock, but a rodent up here's wearing a vest. Do we have um I have some shore leave stuff we can talk about? Yeah, that would be awesome. Let's talk about shore leave. Alright, so uh let's see. Some new some new information that has come out this week. Um Let's see. The Meet the Pros event, they are now going to be premiering 13 books. Oh. And two of them are Star Trek. Fantastic. One by Kristen Beyer. Um, let's see. Also, uh, they have some interesting uh, writers workshops or some, some workshops available. Uh, writing historical fiction. Um, all kinds of writing workshop with uh, Howard Weinstein, uh, Bob Greenberger, Dave Galanter, Bob Jones, and Kelly Metting. That's always great. That's yep. a great shop. Kelly is usually hilarious because she'll say like two words. <laughs> <laughs> some other uh, some other workshop shop, workshops is doggy parenting. 
uh, basic self-defense workshop with Keith of Canada. Keith and, did that at Farpoint as well. And then there the will be a stargazing one. by local a- amateur astronomers as well. So those are stargazing some of the workshops. Stargazing is usually when I'm there and I walk by and they all stare. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, those are some of the, the newest additions. Oh, st- I, I can't pronounce this guy's last name. Author Stephen Kozinewiski. <laughs> I don't know. I apologize, sir. But he's a, a new addition to the guest lineup. Very cool. So, yeah, uh, if you're going to be in the Baltimore area, check out Shore Leave, uh, 37 August 7th through the 9th. If and then of course, also going on at the same time, is Star Trek Star Trek Las Vegas. That's right. In Star Trek Las Vegas, they still have 100 uh, uh, Star Trek affiliated guests that are, are there. The the lineup is just fantastic. Uh, they are, I'm going through just to make sure there's no updates. Although I want to say Jeff Coopwood, he's been added. He's the voice of the Borg. Um, nice. The Sal Rubinek has been added. Of course, Kivas Fajo in the most toys, but probably most recently well known for Warehouse 13. Not and... to be confused with attorney Saul Leibovitz. I'm on Long Island. My name <laughs> is Saul Leibovitz. I'm here for you. J.K. Woodward, whom I adore as being uh, one of the artists for the IDW comic books, uh, he'll be there as well. And that's kind of the ones that I see that we may not have spoken about in the past. Trevor Roth, the COO and head of development for Roddenberry Entertainment. So, yay. Adam Nimoy is a new, um, a new. Edition. He was he was added a couple of weeks ago okay. and took and which was very sweet because he's taking lead billing, which I think yeah. is kind of cool. Um, he'll be there on Friday of the convention and we'll be discussing his project the big the big uh, documentary we were just uh, talking about that's Stephen on, uh, Kozanuski thank you Stephen Ko- Kozanuski 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 thank you that's really with your that... last name you're having trouble hey uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> my tongue don't work that way <laughs> that's what she said oh it works oh, in many other ways bazinga <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> Okay, do we have any other announcements before we tie it up for the day? Um, Well, we do have a bunch of messages that we received this week. Oh, we do? Listener mail. Listener mail. Anything that's going to make us rage, otherwise. Yeah. Well, I think I think one we should we should uh, we should mention real quick. It's not from uh, Baz, is it? Uh, yes, well, one is. He's one got too, a, no, his book is he's oh, he's publishing no, a yeah, paperback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Baz. Do we really have to? <laughs> yes, because we? we do for the oh, Empress. Oh, all right. Well, okay. Don't even put the Empress in the same same universe as Baz. <laughs> I'm I think just even being... Baz would agree. Don't put Baz in the same universe <laughs> with, with the Empress. But well, it's true. His book is going to be available in paperback form on really Amazon. Cool. So that's congratulations. Really cool. That's very cool, Baz. Yay. Um, this this is from Nick, uh, not a co-host Nick, but uh, Nick from the. Um, I want to say it's from Stonewall Fleet. Uh, oh, very sixth, cool. Hi, sixth, Nick. Sixth annual Pride Weekend. Uh, hiya, he says. I'm from Stonewall Fleet, Star Trek Online's premier gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and straight ally fleet. We're well into Pride season for the GLBT community, and Stonewall Fleet is no different. We will be hosting our sixth annual Pride Weekend on July 11th and 12th in Star Trek Online. We were hoping to reach out to you and ask for your support in promoting our event and inviting your listeners to participate. Every year, we have an entire weekend of events, contests, and prizes to help celebrate our our corner of diversity. Feel free to check out this year's itinerary at uh, fleet.stonewallgaming.net slash pride. I'll put the link in the show notes. You can check out our previous years at fleet.stonewallgaming.net slash pride slash 2014 and so on. 
you know, and I was going to bring this up. Um, I'm glad that, that you read that because this today, correct me if I'm wrong, is the anniversary of Stonewall. I think you might. Right. Oh, I know I am. Okay. <laughs> because, and there may be a fan or two that will smile at this, I have it on my Google Calendar. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right today on. Is, See, today so anybody is the that anniversary thinks of Stonewall. That's right. Neanderthal, go fuck your sister. <laughs> And then the Andrew comes out. Hey. And if you don't know what Stonewall is, go look it up. Go it's look it up. Google it. Reading. Fascinating reading. Fascinating. Also, also found out a very interesting thing about the massacres in uh, um, New Orleans, which was also fascinating reading. But uh, massacres so in New Orleans. This on this on this anniversary of Stonewall. What? Our hats off to the Stonewall fleet. We will be there in July. So it's July eleventh and twelfth. And 12th. What massacres in New Orleans? Orleans? Yeah, go look it up. It's uh, serious. I learned about it yesterday. What? You, year uh 60 because, because if i put in massacres new something? orleans will it automatically go to that it might let me look at it okay. but but our hats off to the stonewall fleet we love you yes. guys very very much and um, i miss ali i miss you and and uh, and everybody um and yeah okay uh, and in other uh, in other mail that we received um this is from mike um not me but this is in regards to our episode conventional wisdom and he says, I don't know what was better, Nick vamping or Terry burning down the broadcast sphere after burning down Facebook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, oh, go ahead. I would have so, to say my vamping. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, we had received a comment from Sean Newboy who says that he watched the the cryptic uh, tour interviews that I that I uh, created. He watched them in reverse orders. Awesome series. Thanks, Cryptic. Wonderful content. Also, can't wait to get my Tier 6 forward. So that was Sean Newboy. Cool. Yeah, the the Tier 6... Oh, by the way, the Tier 6 Battle Cruisers came out this week. I'm I'm not a big Battle Cruiser user. Battle Cruiser user, coming <laughs> at you. Battle but... Cruiser user, there is a Jew. I don't know. I got nothing. Oh my god! <laughs> I started and then I petered out. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. It's okay, it happened. Battle cruiser users, it's the new show. Battle cruiser users, don't you know? I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. New battle cruiser user cereal. <laughs> got anything else, Mikey? Um, no. Um, uh, everything else can can wait till next week. Great. Don't forget, we still we still have a contest. If you guys want takedown or not, just call me. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotten to that point, huh? Yeah, it's gotten to that point. Nobody wants to. Well, I, I, I can see uh, nobody wants to read absent I enemies. But I'm just threatened regarding Shirley oh? that someone is going to give Arrowman to say, uh-huh. and I don't think it'll count if it's in the context of working for the show. No, it totally count. Hey, I'm sorry, Barrowman would win. It's true, you it know is it. Barrowman. Oh it's yeah, Barrowman. Oh no, Barrowman. Barrowman, Barrowman's tier one. Ba- yeah, ba- totally. Tier Barrowman one. is a level one diagnostic. If you get my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, I love it. that's great okay so, you guys you know, we yep. got those two contests going on um i saw the write up but we have officially announced the um the, the karaoke video karaoke yep. and lip syncing contest yep so you can lip sync you can karaoke you, it could be any song but bonus points are awarded if a you karaoke and b if if it's a five-year mission song so and five-year mission they are our guest judges on this contest so dressed in brass baby that's right sparkle get you battle cruise so user I, i'm done sparkle get you battle cruise user yeah you betcha okay. i'm sorry people i, I apologize think, i think the name of this week's show is battle cruiser user <laughs> I was going to say it's an idiot party, but you know that's better than Dead Man's. Dead Man. Dead Man's that party. From? Dead oh. Man's party. Mike, were you? Were you? Mike and I looked across the studio at each other, like, "What the fuck?" Oh, sorry. I, yeah, I <laughs> didn't get the reference, but. That's all right. Okay, you guys. I I think that pretty much does it for episode 198. Join us next week. Yes, for scurvy epi- battle cruiser users. That's right. For episode one. Are we nine, here next nine. week for July 4th weekend? Oh, I don't know. Are you? I am. I am. I'm just thinking about our audience. Oh, well. You can always download us. Isn't that amazing? Where can they download us, Mike? They can, oh my gosh, where can they find us? Where can't they find us? That's yeah, right. it would be it would be shorter YouTube. to say where they can't. Right. So YouTube. <laughs> we're on YouTube. Mixcloud. Our Mixcloud. We have our website. We're on iTunes. We are. Oh man, we're still um, on Trek Radio. Yeah, yeah, like an ungodly hour. There's and I, I think we be. have. 
we have yeah. other uh, uh, syndicators as well. So that I, we're probably being broadcast in places that I have no idea about. That's right. So yeah. You cool. know what? Hey, you know what? Uh, what? Tr- speaking of Trek Radio, <laughs> young is lady, this something we want to be? Re- yes. Yeah. No, young lady, you need to come on our show. We haven't talked to you in forever. We miss her very, very much. Very yeah. much. I miss Lisa. Riza, I miss Lisa. We, Riza, we, we need to. Yeah, I miss her. Call out to Riza. Okay. I'll, Shout uh, out. I'll get a hold right. of her. We have Ooh. Pinterest, people. We have GNT Pinterest. Think about that for a second. You know what? People should start posting like Star Trek recipes and shit. You know that I'm they on make Pinterest on Pinterest, and I have no idea how to use it, so I'd I never either. go on it. Yeah, that's true. We uh, uh, Facebook, give us a like. YouTube, subscribe. Twitter, give us a, a, a follow. Shall like subscribe. And what, what what do you people do on Pinterest and Tumblr? Uh, Pin. Pin and, no, pin, pin and follow. But or yeah, tumble, like okay. us. What, is it like us on Pinterest? Follow it. Follow it's, us on Pinterest. It's follow, 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 follow. Do whatever those social media platforms require you to do. Yeah. To stop Click it. on it. Share. Share our links, people. Oh, Mike. What? Do you want to talk about the Amazon thing? Uh, no. Uh, we, we, we can do it next week. There was so much news this week. Yeah. Okay, because All right. I was actually asked about that yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 want, I want us to talk about it first before okay. we, we, we go public. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Is. Okay. We are buying oh. Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> we're buying them a car they thank you all right thank you, guys. you no seriously this is the end of the show uh have a great one we will see you next week Satellite apparently up. for episode 199 uh we will uh 199 199 wow. and you'll be happy to know bands we have not even discussed episode 200 we really haven't not even a not even a peep nope. well there was what? that one thing last week <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about that what, what was i part of that <laughs> yes <laughs> you were here Oh my god! Live show? On the show? I don't know. See, now we're having show. Okay. We're having show discussions on the show again. Okay, it's the best part of the show. <laughs> All right. All right. Kapla. Kapla. Live long and prosper. Come on, true. Hey, hey! Oh. I didn't step on your kapla. Okay. Come on, true. Just... Music for the G and T show is provided by Warp Eleven, Andrew Allen, Grethor, and Five Year Mission. This has been a Busy Little Beaver production. I'm gonna take a five-year tour. Only go where no man's gone before. I'm gonna travel to the end and make new friends. Move ahead, walk back to ten. Skirt on my old man Represent the human race And we make this A happy place To fully go where no man's gone before I think I sang that line once before But I'm not too sure We'll be so happy, can't you see A zero G Or code.